Well, for more on mental health in the digital age, I'm joined live from San Francisco by Kirk Schneider, psychologist and leading spokesperson for existential humanistic psychology. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Dalal. So let's start by looking at the role that Silicon Valley's culture and products have played in increasing burnout and anxiety. Well, I can speak uh, as a uh, private practitioner and having seen a number of employees from Silicon Valley, um, I'm finding that uh, there does seem to be a, an increase in anxiety and uh, sense, uh, really a sense of n not finding the, the meaning uh, and the deeper value in their work and also being frustrated by uh, some of the ways that uh, high tech has been involved with um, civil rights abuses, human rights abuses, uh, you know, how, how bigots have sometimes uh, dominated the, uh, the use of high tech or propagandists. And that, that's, that's certainly a lot of weight for someone to try and carry. So how is the tech industry dealing with these mental health issues, especially since the selling point is a lot of these companies from the outside looking in is that they have all these wellness perks? Yes, I mean, I, I think they're attempting to do what they can, but a lot of what they know is tech. So one of my concerns, uh, my colleagues' concerns, is that the uh, solutions they're using to deal with the mental health issues are some of the problems that bring people to mental health practitioners. That is, they fit into this quick fix, instant result society. And some things just can't be fixed so quickly. So there seems to be an emphasis on creating more apps. Uh, startups are uh, apparently uh, turning out apps uh, for anxiety, depression, uh, various uh, other psychological conditions uh, very quickly. And there are questions about the, um, the, the potency of, of uh, that kind of mental health work. And, and Kirk, I mean, you, you, you raise an interesting point. So talk about some of the challenges or downsides in having so many of these new apps in the mental health space, some of which aren't necessarily backed up by science or, or certified industry professionals. Yes, I, I think the, the science is still accumulating about these apps. And certainly, they have been helpful to some people in certain circumstances. But I think our, our basic problem in, in many ways throughout the country, again, is this emphasis on the quick fix and instant result, which tech accelerates. And I think we really need to promote more in-depth, person-to-person uh, re relationships. And uh, this takes some time. Um, and it takes uh, working with an attuned practitioner that helps a person to develop a greater presence to themselves and to their relationships to the world and to others. So, Kurt, when you talk about some of these um, traditional therapists, how do they factor into this need for, for the sort of services to meet these now fast-paced everyday lifestyles? Well, we, we try to help uh, clients to slow down, first of all, and, and to get some distance from their devices and attempt to be more present to what really matters about their lives. Um, how are they presently living in their lives? Asking these deeper existential questions. How are they presently living? And also, how are they willing to live, given how they're presently living? And this is the responsibility question. How are they going to you know, take responsibility for their, their current concern or struggle and, and enact it in the world. Certainly and, very, and again, certainly very, very, very important. And, and thank you for the, all that good advice there. Kirk Schneider, the psychologist and leading spokesperson for existential humanistic psychology.